Dr. Jerry Melnar, candidate for trustee for Johnson County Community College. Dr. Jerry Melnar, what are your unique skills that you can contribute to Johnson County Community College? And then uh, League of Women Voters uh, for this opportunity. Um, as a physician and an educator, uh, I think I'll bring, I, I can bring some unique insights into, in particular, the healthcare programs. We are going to experience uh, a, a, a steady decline in the number of nurses that are uh, working in the clinical space, uh, up up to about 500,000 by by uh, 2030. And so uh, there's opportunities there uh, for us to grow those programs. And given my background, I can certainly help that along. Uh, but also as a, a, a businessman uh, uh, working for a, a large corporation, I can bring some, also some insights uh, into what's going on with your CE programs, uh, in particular uh, with the trades programs. I think there's lots of opportunities to build partnerships uh, uh, with local businesses uh, to grow uh, some programs there. Dr. Jerry Melnar, what makes a community college have comprehensive access? Um, in terms of comprehensive, uh, having a college uh, like Johnson County that does a good job in regards to not only credit programs, but also uh, continuing education programs. So offering a, a diversity of, of, of offerings that's uh, not only relevant to the students, but also relevant to our community as well, because uh, we, we certainly have uh, a lot of unfilled, uh, skilled labor jobs right now that uh, we're gonna need to address uh, as a board if we're gonna really function as an effective community college, because. Dr. Jerry Melnar, what is your vision for diversity and inclusion? Um, diversity and inclusion is the best path to achieve excellence in any endeavor. And uh, I've built my career based on that, those as core tenets. I build my teams uh, in my professional life by seeking and finding the best talent to get the work done. Woody, I think it's laudable what we're doing right now in healthcare in order to attempt to uh, uh, create some equity in terms of healthcare outcomes, because there are people who have disadvantages that are unable to. Dr. Jerry Melnar, what is your vision for the shared governance of JCCC? Um, I mean, shared governance is really about partnership, mutual respect, and uh, what's Required of that to be successful as well is to be having open channels of communication between what's happening in the classroom uh, from our faculty to inform the decisions that are being made for the college. Uh, these are uh, practiced uh, educators uh, who can provide some, some very meaningful impact uh, and, and inputs uh, and suggestions as to where we uh, could potentially take the college, where they're, they're seeing uh, gaps uh, that we could potentially close. But it, it really boils down to having a good partnership between those decision-making bodies uh, in order to make uh, decisions that affect our, our stakeholders, which are not only the faculty. But... Dr. Jerry Melnar, what are the unique needs for the inclusion of adjunct faculty? I actually uh, was an adjunct professor at uh, St. Louis University uh, for uh, family and community medicine and followed up with that. I was adjunct at uh, Washington University, uh, for which was pretty much the bulk of my private practice experience. And uh, that really, uh, how it benefited the student was they got some really practical learning uh, from someone who was doing the craft. Uh, that's, that's the difference between being an academic uh, physician versus a practicing physician. Of course, I went on from there because I liked the teaching aspect and ended up becoming a faculty member at UMKC. So I, I see the benefit that, that adjuncts bring, but I was 
out there doing my own thing, didn't have a voice uh, when it came to uh, what was going on with regards to the university. Uh, or to uh, what I'm hearing that's happening at Johnson County Community College. They're a valued asset. I had a good friend of mine that, that taught uh, a specialized course at the Block Business School. Uh, so they can really kind of expand the, the offerings, but it's important that those individuals have some representation. So getting back to that conversation we were having earlier around shared governance, I think it's incumbent upon the, the organization to figure out ways to get them. But I was out there doing my own thing, didn't have a voice uh, when it came to uh, what was going on with regards to the university, uh, to uh, what I'm hearing that's happening at those individuals have some representation. It's incumbent upon the, the organization to figure out ways to get them. Dr. Jerry Melinar, what impact do you predict if JCC becomes no cost? And what should the trustees do to prepare the college? Certainly nothing is free. And uh, uh, just to dovetail off Paul's comments, um, I, when you have the feds getting in the middle of stuff like this, uh, I would anticipate, and what I've heard is we'll probably have more regulation. So uh, that'll compete with uh, the academic uh, aims of, of the college. Uh, it'll also in, you know, have probably restrictions on, uh, or uh, expectations around enrollment and graduation uh, rates. That's what I fear the most when you get uh, the federal government involved in this is we're going we're to have to deal with other regulation that oftentimes will get in the way of the academic mission of the school.